Hi guys, um, sorry this is slightly late, um, I kind of forgot to do it yesterday, so I'm calling it now and um, I'll upload it straight away. So, um, the topic of this for this week was relationships and how your eating disorder affects relationships. So, basically, um, basically it always complicates everything um, in like any relationship you have whether it's with family or friends or um, partners and stuff um, so I suppose with um, with family it's um, because like you're around them all the time they pick things up they know like you you can when you are actually are in your eating disorder when you're um, in the kind of like you know your eating disorder is really bad and things like that um i mean you you can lie and you can twist everything and you can make it seem as if you're eating more than you are but that only works so far and that only works for so long because clearly once <coughs> you're losing weight um people do notice you're getting smaller i mean it it's you can see it and um they also can notice little things like, um, you know, not finishing your meals, or you know, <laughs> you can use excuses like, oh, I ate earlier, or um, you know, I'm not feeling well. You can only use that for so long because you know, you you can't be like, oh, I'm not feeling very well today. I'm not feeling very well today because they notice. I mean, family do notice, um, and then of course, then it comes that they try to help which can sometimes make it even more because the last thing you want to do when you're in your eating disorder is to have people noticing what you're eating because you don't want them to notice because you don't want them to try and stop you from what you're doing not that the people can stop you because if you have an eating disorder no one can force you to eat it's you know it has you have to decide to do it yourself so it's getting a bit comfier um and it's the same with friends and partners and stuff um you know and obviously if you are trying to recover um you know sometimes people think well um oh, well you've gained a bit of weight now you're you're okay you know you're gaining weight you're fine but it doesn't necessarily mean you are fine you know even if you're eating doesn't necessarily mean your eating disorder's gone you know you still have the thoughts and um things like that so uh, and like, you can talk to it you know like with my family and friends um and you know my husband you know you can talk to them about how you're feeling but they don't understand and i think it's quite frustrating for them and it's frustrating for you because no matter how you try to explain it to them and you know they just can't understand which can lead to a lot of frustration and a lot of anger um because they're they're obviously trying to help you and it comes because they love you and they care about you and they do want to help you but it just comes to a point that they can't understand like there's just sometimes when you're like I just can't can you just give me five minutes and if you're living with people that can be hard because they're like well you know we're having dinner now why aren't you eating now and you're like I just give me you know and they don't understand and I think that's very frustrating for them and it's very frustrating for the sufferer as well because they are trying and sometimes it can seem as if you're trying so hard and it's never good enough and it's not that it's not good enough it's that they don't understand um, where you're coming from and why you're struggling I mean to them it's like you know oh I'm hungry I'll go and eat but when you have an eating disorder you don't necessarily think that you think I'm hungry but I don't want to eat because um I've had my calories for today or you know well I haven't you know or I had slightly more at lunch so I can't have my full dinner or whatever it's you know very very complicated and frustrating which can lead to a lot of pressure on relationships I found um because like so they don't um understand so they're frustrated and it leads it can sometimes affect relationships um so yeah so it does complicate it and it can be very very hard for people because uh, like you know 
I live with my husband clearly because we're married. <laughs> we live together. Um, so, like, they, he notices everything, you know. I don't bother trying to hide anything anymore. It's, it's just easier just to let him know. Um, but sometimes I, personally, I find it like if I am struggling and um, he's like, you know, trying to be helpful and like, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll go and we'll get something eat to dinner or whatever like that you know trying to be helpful and trying to sort of and then sometimes you know <laughs> not that he tries to force anything it's just that it sometimes when you're not ready and you've got someone that's trying to sort of like well it's dinner time come on then you're like yeah I don't want you know but um <laughs> with me and my husband like we have completely different eating habits like he is, you know, very sort of like meat and processed food and chips and crisps and fatty stuff. Um, and he doesn't like vegetables at all, which is really... I love vegetables and um, he just, <laughs> you know, like I could have a whole meal just with vegetables and like pasta or something like that. And he's, you know, and the portion sizes. It took me so long from when we started going out to like even now um his portion sizes are huge like you know he has a big because we have like several different plates we have big plates and then we have these smaller plates and i always eat off the smaller plates because i can't eat the same amount as him i mean he's six foot and you know um he like eats a lot more than i do um so you know, it took me like quite a long time for, you know, when I'm like, I really, really can't eat the way you eat. Um, so that did, you know, for a while because I would, wouldn't finish my meals. Not that I was, sometimes not that I was necessarily trying to not eat or trying to, um, you know, cut calories out. I just physically could not eat the amounts that he was eating. Um, because like I said, he eats huge portions. Um, but you know so that did create a little bit of tension um but um i think with eating disorders when you are trying to recover it's um you know you sometimes rely on those relationships even more than what you would normally you know because also when you are in your eating disorder you kind of don't want people around you do isolate um i think michelle mentioned that in her video um, about you know you become very isolated and you push people away and it's when you're trying to recover that you really do need the support of people and I think that's when you sort of find out um, the people you can rely on more is when you do go through things like that when you do you know even though those people have been around um, while you were suffering you know when you were in your eating disorder when you're trying to recover from it you know, when you're in your eating disorder, you're kind of pushing them away, and then when you're trying to recover, you kind of like want to pull them back. And sometimes, like with having an eating disorder, you push certain friends away, like so far that they're not around when you actually want to recover and you actually do want someone um, to talk to or to speak to. So I think that's when, when you're in re recovery, it's like you. Your friends and your family and people around you, you just need them even more than you would normally. Um, I think that goes for any sort of mental illness like depression and um, anxiety and stuff. That's when, you know, when you are trying to recover from it or trying to get better, um, that's when you need those people even more. So, you know, that's the sort of eating disorders and relationship things. Um, don't really have any tips or things. I think um, if you are recovering, I would say the, the best thing to do is to be as honest as you can with people. Um, you know, if if you are struggling and you're really like, I just can't eat this meal, you know, I just don't want this, um, I'm really, really struggling. Um, I, you know, say for example, if you're going out for like, you know, um, pizza or something and you, you're really like, can't eat the pizza I you know um just let them know that you are struggling and you really really like you know um like I said sometimes it can be hard because they don't understand why you can't just eat the pizza or whatever um so 
light goes off. Um, so yes, yeah, so you know, um, the best thing to do is just be honest. Um, like I said, living with my husband, you know, he notices stuff, and so I don't bother. You know, I just tell him, yeah, I'm struggling now, um, because as much as these other people around you are trying to help, it has to come from you. You have to want to recover. You have to want to, you know, try to um, get better. So if they're trying to force you it's not really going to work because it's not it's not you that wants to do it if you know what I mean I explained that very well um, so yes that's a bit of summary on that kind of ramble um, so the question of the week was um, embarrassing stories um, I can't really think of much off head and the ones that I can think usually involve when I've um, been drunk which is, um, I don't get drunk that often um, and I get drunk very quickly because I don't drink that often so when I do drink <laughs> I tend to um, you know do embarrassing things like um, there was one time um, I was wearing these new shoes as well and I'm used to wearing high heels and you know these were platform high heel shoes um, boots actually and I got very drunk very quickly and just spent most of the night falling over and at one point I had my friend on one side of me and one of my other friends their boyfriend was both of them on each on one side holding me up all night so yes um, that wasn't exactly um, one of my best moments um, what other things um, yeah like I said most of them involved being drunk um, yeah basically so that's one of my drunken escapades um, i trying to think that was, that was many many years ago um, I think that was, yeah that was probably about 18, 19 at the time that that one happened. Um, I'm trying to think of more recent ones, but I kind of don't drink that much anymore. Um, so yes, I don't really have very many embarrassing stories that don't involve alcohol. That is really bad. I feel like a oh god. Anyway, so yes, I'll wrap this video up because um, I really, really have to get to bed today because I have things to do later on so I have to get some sleep and I have to go to bed earlier than normal so yes I apologise for the video being late um, I shall make sure next week that I post it on Wednesday and not Thursday morning so um, I hope you all are well and I shall see you next Wednesday <laughs>